So we're here with a view reel. Hi. Hello. Uh, so, so please introduce yourself. I'm Reza, CEO and co-founder of Viorio. I uh, used to work in industry since uh, and display since 2004. Working OLED for a while. Uh, we developed a technology for OLED TV, licensed that to LG, and then 2016 I started Viorio with a focus on integrating micrometer, optical, and up to electronic devices into a surface. So micro LED is one but we're also working on different type of sensors. So the idea is to create an uh, app market for micro devices. So the same way that uh, the smartphone did for the applications, that now you have all these different applications, we want to do for hardware. We want to enable different companies to use different devices, easily print them on a surface, and create different applications. So uh, from medical device, fitness, health, biometric security, all the way to displays, entertainment, infotainment, and all those things. So that's kind of uh, the potential of this technology. So it's, uh, it's a micro LED displays right here. And you show some right here that are pretty bright. Yeah, so this is a two, these are two micron uh, LEDs that we made uh, to show the potential that you can actually make very high efficient devices uh, with uh, a small uh, size. And then with all printing process, we can use that and create different applications. So we can make cost competitive device with this uh, technology. And, and you have a way to, to make it full color? Yes. So we are working on uh, approaches for full color AR and VR, and our target is to uh, reveal them at the SID 2024. Can you explain a little bit what the industry is doing for full color micro LED right now? So there are five different ways of making uh, full color micro LED for augmented reality. So there, there is the traditional way of using prism with three displays. Uh, the other one is to do a quantum dot. So you need, three, you need three display. Every display is running differently and going through a prism. Yeah. And then the other one is to do a quantum dot, to do color conversion. Uh, you can do sub, sub pixel red, green, blue side by side, but with such a small pixel for augmented reality is very hard. The other one is uh, to stack them. The challenge with the stacking is a very complex process, low yield, and also you're going to lose a lot of uh, performance. And then uh, there are another approach that they, uh, one device can create different color. It's very promising. The challenge is, uh, is red uh, has happened at low current, so you may get low brightness displays. And then your blue is happening at high brightness. And then uh, creating grayscale for blue at high brightness is going to be also challenging. We, are, uh, we have developed a completely new approach that is very cost competitive. Uh, it has the benefits of uh, micro LED, uh, but it, it can be at much lower cost and can be very high resolution as well. And, and it sounds amazing when you're talking about this that you, you can, maybe your technology can enable uh, like an app store of all kinds of ideas of, in technology, electronics, in all kinds of ways. Because uh, I'm trying to understand, but uh, like the, the way you, you print a layer for the micro LED display is similar to how you print whatever, like sensors and anything? Exactly, yeah. So there is very, our solution is very universal. So you can do different devices, different uh, uh, type, and then print them on a surface in one surface or different surface and so create different hardware applications. So this, we think the same thing that the smartphone did for the app store, this platform has the potential to do for hardware. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, some applica different application or you will talk about it later? Is it like... So, is so for example, right now, if you look at your phone, there is a notch for biometrics, uh, face detection. You don't need that. You can integrate that into your pixel. Uh, you want to do health detection, you can ex extract, ex put extra sensors in your, in your uh, display. Uh, for automotive, if you want to do uh, uh, automation and LiDAR, you don't need those bulky things. You can print those on the, on the glass and, and use them on the body or, or the glass of the car. So there is a lot of potential in, uh, in new way to, uh, to design and develop a lot of new applications. Uh, touch sensor or? 
touch is one of them. So you can do a traditional touch, or you can do even completely new way of touch with the, with the integrating different type of sensors. Humidity sensor, temperature sensor, yeah. anything you can and imagine. Yeah, if you can make any optoelectronic devices, we can print them on a surface. Uh, so uh, maybe, I don't know, in the future, uh, maybe you have some kind of a thing, it's flexible, maybe not, uh, and then everything's in, inside. We call it multifunctional surfaces. So it's one surface, but can do way more than one, one thing. That, that lowers the cost, lowers the potentially power consumption, the price, the everything. Yeah, and also it makes it much more compact. So uh, you can do a lot more with one compact device. All right, and uh, you have a, a meeting room here with a bunch more demos. This is just a small... Yeah, so small, these are some small. of the portable stuff that we brought to uh, this show. Actually, we just also won an award uh, for, uh, for our technology. And uh, we, but we have a lot, a lot more with different applications at our uh, booth. Bigger displays? Bigger displays, different applications. All right. And then looking forward to the SID Display Week 2024, yes. where you might have some We're tough have surprises. surprises. Yep. All right. Uh, because it's a big talk right now, uh, Apple is trying to spoil uh, the CES with uh, launching their Vision Pro, and there's a lot of talk of uh, they're doing micro OLEDs, uh, 4K little one inch something, one point something inch, and uh, is micro LED gonna kill them? Oh, I don't want to say kill, but is it gonna be like, how is it gonna be better or not than a micro OLED? So. Generally, micro LED is more power efficient if you do it properly than micro OLED. But the way we are going to do and introduce display for VR is also going to be lower cost. Uh, so the, there is in the news, we don't, I don't know the exact, but there is in the news that each display for Apple Vision Pro is around $700. That's a very expensive display. Uh, with, uh, with our approach, you can actually do it at much lower cost with the same performance but lower power as well. Are we talking seventy dollars? I'm just oh, joking. I'm just yeah, joking. We cannot talk about the number yet. Even if it's low cost, we want to charge some premium. <laughs> and I want to have a long life on these. Hopefully, the last ten years or something without breaking, overheating. I, I guess technology often has a problem when it's overheating. It doesn't get too hot. All this stuff because it looks very bright. Yeah. So one of the unique thing about micro LED is that they're very power efficient. I used to work in OLED. So if you, if, you, if you run the OLED like this at this brightness, you, they will age in 10-20 uh, minutes. Uh, with these things, you run them forever and nothing happened to them. So they are very reliable, very uh, stable. Uh, they don't have thermal issues, so it's very easy to integrate different uh, applications. So it might make the integration much easier. I'd love to see a design that's uh, affordable and uh, where it doesn't matter if there's a few dead pixels or something, whatever, and uh, a trick to make it disappear, all the dead, I don't know, some kind of, uh, I guess it's just algorithm in the, the way you pattern the stuff, and so the, the yields can be great and low price. Yeah, so we, we, the way we are doing, uh, uh, we, uh, we bin the cartridge before the transfer, and also our process is very simple, so our, our uh, yield is actually more than 5.9 already, and uh, with that, it's easy to do the repair and improve the, uh, the uh, display performance. So we don't, we don't do any calibration on displays, but you can see displays, they're very uniform, they per perform really well. It's because of our approach to the cartridge and, and uh, binning the cartridge.